thank you for this introduction. Uh, hi, I'm Ting from the Monashi University. And today, I just want to talk uh, one of my research project um, called Driving House, which is a big study. And um, today's pres presentation is about the phase one of this project, about work-related injury and illness in Australia, road transport workers. <coughs> I've got pain issues, uh, back pain issues, osteoarthritis, and I got heart attack. Most of the things I've got, I think, are related to the job because of the stress. Trucks are not the most comfortable vehicles, the constant vibration and pounding, changing tires and things like that. So this course, it's actually from a Sydney truck driver, Phil, who has been subcontracting to the same company for the last 46 years, including 40 years driving interstate. As you may aware, transport workers are a vital part of the Australia economy. Truck driving is a growing industry and the most common occupation for Australian males, employing about one in every 33 or about 200,000 drivers in Australia. You may heard the face, without trucks, Australia stops. <coughs> but you may not know the truck driver or other tra uh, transport workers, they are subject to a unique set of conditions like sedentary work, poor diet, long working hours, shift work, isolation from the society, fatigue, or sleep issues. That all will increase the risk of multiple uh, mobilities like hypertension, diabetes, overweight, and car accident. So in Australia, the rate of work-related fatalities in road transport industry is about 10 times higher than the average for all industries. However, um, there are only limited research in Australia look at the health and the well-being of the tr this working population. So our study the aims of our study are to describe the nature, extent, and impact of work-related injury and illness in road transport workers across different occupation groups, and also to compare the incidence of the injury, as well as the duration of time lost in transport workers compared to other Australian workers. The data you said we used in this study is the compensation-based statistic NDS data. So the NDS data is it's a from um, workers' compensation claims data from 10 of the major state, territory, and commonwealth <laughs> workers' compensation system. And in this project, seven major Australia compensation system, presenting more than 90% of the labor force, are included in the, this study. But unfortunately, this project did not include the claims from three commonwealth <laughs> workers' compensation system because some key uh, variables are missing. So um, during the study period from 2004 to 2015, it's like 12 finance year, um, we identified almost 3.5 accepted claims in the data set. So inclusion criteria for our study <coughs> is only include the accepted claims, so those rejected claims and pending claims we exclude from the analysis. And also, we limited the claims, um, had the lodgement date from 2004 to 2015, finance year, and only include those workers aged more than 15 years old at the time of injury, and with normal weekly working hours between one and 100 hours. And please uh, beware, our study does not include claims from three com uh, commonwealth workers' compensation system. And we use the Australia and New Zealand standard occupation coding system to identify eight uh, occupational groups for our study, including truck drivers, delivery drivers, bus drivers, automobile drivers, 
rail drivers and those non-drivers in transport sector. And we also set two comparison group, um, which are other male dominant occupations like um, laborers from mining, farmers, and also all other workers as a comparison. And we also use the standardized uh, injury coding system to categorize six major type of injury, including fraction, musculoskeletal injury, neurologic injury, psychologic injury, and other traumatic injury and other diseases. And we used descriptive analysis to describe the counts and the proportion of accepted claims across those occupational groups. We also estimate the rates of claims per 1,000 covered worker using the denominator, uh, denominator um, data provided by Safe Work, the labor force data. And also, we estimate the ratio of incident rates in the driving groups compared to all other workers um, by negative binomial regression. And we also examine the medium duration of time lost due to the injury. Um, this slide shows the percentage, so give you a bit of overview of the percentage, percentage of accepted workers' compensation claims by industry. So of the 3.5 million claims in Australia during the study period, so about 7.2 of the claims were from people employed in the transport, postage, and warehousing industry, the red component. The largest industry by volume of the claims was manufacturing, with about 18.5 claims, uh, followed by the healthcare and social assistant and construction. <coughs> this figure shows, the, give, me, uh, give you a, a bit detail of total number of the claims in different occupations. So we can see the non-drivers in transport sector attribute the most claims, um, around 56% uh, of the total claims in transport sector. And the next, the most high represent group were truck drivers, followed by delivery drivers, rail drivers, and automobile drivers <coughs> made fewer claims compared to other transport workers. But um, we should know that not all the transporter, like not all the drivers are employed in the transport industry. For example, the total number of truck, uh, truck drivers claims is comprised about half from the transport industry and with another half from other industries like construction, manufacturing, mining, agriculture. These slides um, show the age distribution of the injured worker by occupational groups. Um, bus driver had the greatest proportion of claims from the worker aged 45 years old and over, just from the yellow section um, to the right, and followed by the truck driver. So about 50% about the total claims uh, aged over 45 years old. And more than 50% of all claims also come from workers uh, 50 years old in the delivery driver. So the non-drivers, automobile drivers, and all other worker groups had the youngest age profile, with more than 55 of their claims arising from the workers age under 45 years old. In terms of the type of injury by the occupational group, it's very clear the musculoskeletal conditions were the most common condition in all of the eight occupation groups in this study. And delivery drivers and bus drivers had the highest proportion of musculoskeletal claims, the green section. And um, truck driver and automobile driver had the highest proportion of fraction claims, the red section. <coughs> and also, the rear drivers had a noticeable the yellow section, proportion of mental health conditions claims than other occupational groups, followed by the bus driver. Claims for other traumatic injury, the black section, 
were more common for workers in all other male-dominant occupation than in the transport sector groups. When examining the mechanism by occupation groups, the proportion of the claim due to body stressing, the yellow section, was higher in delivery drivers and um, non-drivers in the transport sector. And the claims due to being hate or hating objectives, the black section, were more common in workers in other or other <coughs> male-dominated occupations. For truck drivers, body stressing was the most common mechanism of the condition, and falls, trips, and sleeps was the second most common mechanism. Claims due to mental stress account for almost 20% of all claims for real drivers, which was significantly higher than other occupational group. These slides show um, the approximate rate of accepted worker compensation claims per 1,000 workers across those occupational group, and also the result from our negative binomial regression. So um, we can see uh, real drivers recorded a rate of 99 claims for every 1,000 workers per year. This is nearly five times higher than the comparable rates in all other uh, in all other workers' occupational group, and 40% greater than the rates in other male-dominated occupation groups. And truck driver also recorded a high risk, a high rate, at um, 70 claims per 1,000 workers per year. <coughs> Delivery and the bus driver recorded rates that a bit slow, a bit below those in other other male-dominated groups but still approximately 2.5 times higher than all other workers. Um, our regression on the left, on your right, um, the finding confirmed the descriptive statistic present in this um, cute figure. Um, that show like all the driver groups are at great risk of work-related injury and illness than all other workers, and rail drivers at the greatest relative risk, and followed by truck drivers. Um, this slide is kind of busy, but these slides give you more details about the um, injury, the risk of uh, the incidence ratio of the injury by different type of um, conditions across those occupational groups. So as we see in the previous slides, the transport occupations or the driver, all the drivers are generally at a great risk of the work-related injury than all other occupation category. And truck driver had the highest relative risk of fraction here. Um, with an incident rate almost five times higher than other workers. And truck driver also had a high relative risk of muscular skeletal disorder with about 3.5 times increased risk ratio to all other workers. Muscular skeletal. So rail drivers were about over 30 for the greater risk of making a, a worker's compensation claim due to mental health conditions than other workers. This one. And a bus driver also had a significant higher risk of mental health condition. And truck drivers were not observed to be at a high risk of mental health condition compared to all other workers. Yeah. And we also found all the driver's occupations had a higher risk in the traumatic, other traumatic injury compared to uh, all other workers. So the red, sorry, the red by here is the, is the reference group in S1, represent all other workers. Um, this slide shows the mediation of the compensate time lost 
per worker in working days by those occupational group. So um, it's very clear there are there is a bit wide variation in the duration of time loss between these occupational groups. So the longest duration is in automob automobile drivers at 24 working days, followed by truck drivers at around 17 working days. And then deliver drivers uh, about 15 days. So the occupation with the shortest duration of time loss was rail drivers, about six working days. This is shorter than um, the non-drivers in transport uh, sector and also all other male dominant occupation and all other workers. So in summary, we found the transport workers are at increased risk of work-related injury and diseases than the workers in other occupations. And truck driver and other drivers are particularly at risk of musculoskeletal injury that's rooted in their transportation environment. And public transport drivers are more likely to be express um, the occupational mental stress. And also truck deliver and automobile drivers have substantially longer period of time off work after the injury than workers in other occupations. So in conclusion, um, our study suggests that interventions aimed at preventing musculoskeletal disorder should be um, prioritized when devising occupational risk reduction strategy for transport workers, for example, like review and revision of policies and procedures for manually handling or redesign of entrance at least from the trailer car to prevent falls. And also maintaining the seat comfortable is also important. And the mental health promotion and treatment for public, health, uh, public transport drivers is also an important area of concern. Um, the strength of our study is that we use uh, the data set involves the population coverage of the compensation work-related injury and illness at the national level. So, and using the standardized coding system allows us to compare um, the comparison within across the occupational industry categories. However, some work-related chronic conditions may not, may be underreported uh, in the compensation system. And also, um, we need to know, like a large proportion of transport workers, they are independent contractor which were not able to be present in the NDS data set. As I said, this is the first phase of our driving house project. So in the next steps, and we will use the Victoria compensation system to look at the health service used by truck drivers following a, a, a work-related injury and illness. And also we will also examine the pharmaceutical use after the injury. And in the early next year, our group will run a national truck driver survey um, to answer two research questions. What are the major health conditions experienced by Australian truck drivers? And what work, social, and psychology environment or regulated factors are associated with those um, health conditions? And if you would like to know about the driving house project or get involved in the survey, you could contact our research team through this email or visit the website or just contact me after the conference. So in the end, I want to acknowledge um, our research partner, Link Fox, and the Transport Worker Uni uh, funding this study. And um, I also want to send the Safe Work Australia and the workers' compensation uh, jurisdiction that are great to provide the data for the study. And the professor, um, Roger, uh, and Ms. Dan, um, their contribute to this project. Thank you. Any question? Thank you.